In this video, I'm excited to share with you a way to transform your regular videos into visually stunning animations using AI. I've actually made a tutorial before on a similar method using Disco Diffusion. It can give you some pretty cool results, but it can also get pretty messy. Today we will use Warp Fusion instead, an easier method that uses Control Net to achieve more structured and consistent results. The publisher Alex regularly uploads new versions on his Patreon. I expect that he will eventually release Warp Fusion notebooks for free. Either way, I will add a link to the version I'm using today in the description below. And the first thing you need to do is download the notebook through this link here. If you have an NVIDIA GPU with at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you can run Warp Fusion on your own hardware. I've included a link in the description to a detailed guide on how to get started. But if you don't have the right GPU, you can still run the notebook completely online. To get started, go to Google Collab. It's worth noting that if you're willing to invest a bit in this method, upgrading to Collab Pro will grant you access to more resources and help you run the process much faster. To run Stable Warp Fusion, go to File and select Upload Notebook, choose the Stable Warp Fusion Notebook. If Google Collab doesn't connect to resources automatically, click Connect on the top right corner. Next, click on the Files tab. Make sure you have a few free gigabytes of space on your Google Drive, at least 5 gigs to start with, and you will need more if you plan on using this often. Now, when it comes to the animation, we're gonna use something called an AI model to determine the look and style of our output. Some of these models can help you achieve specific styles like anime, arcane, Disney, and more. I go into more details about this in my stable diffusion video. For a more realistic look, I'm planning to use a model called Protogen. You can find the link below. And to get started, you'll need to upload the Protogen checkpoint file to your Google Drive. I've already created a folder called AI models. I will simply drop it here and leave it to upload. Now go back to Google Collab and look for the prepare folder cell. Click on the play button to run it you will be prompt to connect to your Google Drive, select your account and click allow. Wait a few seconds for it to run. And once it's done, click here to refresh the folders list. You should be able to see your own Google Drive files here. You can also upload files directly to Google Collab by clicking on this little button. The first file we'll need is the original video clip you wanna transform. I'm using a clip of my friend Zono, who is one of my absolute favorite and most creative content creators out there. One thing to keep in mind here is that using super high quality videos can take up a lot of resources and slow down the process. That's why for this this example, I'm using a vertical 720p video. While it may not be the best quality, I'll be showing you some ways to improve it later on. The second file is a text document with some preset animation settings. I got this from Alex and made a few tweaks to it. I'll leave a link to it in the description and I'll show you how to make changes to it later in this video. So let's select both files and upload them. When the upload is finished, they will appear on the files tab. The settings might look a bit overwhelming, but don't worry, there are only a few we need to change. Under settings, you can change the batch name. This will be the folder where the output animation will be saved. So make sure to choose a proper name, look for the animation dimensions just below and make sure they match those of the original video. Scroll down to video input settings. This is where you need to direct the AI to your video. So go to your original video clip, right click on it, then select copy path and paste it inside the video init path input. Right below that, change extract nth frame to 2. This means the AI will only process every second frame. For example, if your video has 100 frames in total, you'll be processing 50 of those frames. This sacrifices a bit of smoothness, but it will cut the processing time in half. Next, scroll down to generate optical flows and consistency maps, enable force flow generation, and reverse CC order. Ensure the model version is set to control multi. The model path is used to point the AI to a specific checkpoint file. Of course, you can stick to the default one, which works great. However, I wanted to show you that you have other options depending on the style you want to achieve. To point to my protogen model, go to drive, my drive, find the AI models folder, right click on the checkpoint, copy the path and paste it into the model path input. Next, enable force download. Enable the first three control net models, Canny, Depth, and HED. Now scroll all the way down to this GUI section. This time we need to point to our settings file, 
same process, copy the path and paste it right here. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Now we are ready to run the AI. So let's go to runtime and click on run all to execute all the cells. You'll be able to see the cells running one by one before the video frames start processing. Keep in mind that some cells may take longer than others. So be patient and wait while it runs. In some cases, you may encounter errors. I have added some resources in the pinned comment below that will help you resolve such issues, including a link to my Discord server where we managed to solve plenty of errors. The truth is AI content is becoming so popular and for many good reasons, people are making so much money with AI content these days. And guess what? You can too. This is now made easy with today's sponsor, Wirestock. Wirestock is a platform that makes it super simple to make money with your digital content. It takes care of distributing your AI generated images, stock photos and videos to some of the biggest marketplaces out there such as Adobe Stock, 123RF, Pond5 and Deposit Photos. Signing up for Wirestock is free. All you have to do is upload your content and you will be able to submit it in a matter of seconds. Wirestock will handle all of the tedious work related to keywording and captions so you can focus on creating more amazing content and maximizing your revenue. Now when submitting content that has been generated by AI, be sure to mention AI generated in the additional information field. As a creator on Wirestock, you'll receive a free portfolio where you can sell your digital content or even sell print. While Wirestock is free to use, they also offer a premium upgrade that gives you access to some additional features. You'll be able to unlock more submissions and have them reviewed much faster. This is definitely worth considering if you're looking to get the most out of Wirestock. As a premium user, you will also be able to participate in photo challenges and win cash prizes. So if you decide to opt in for the membership, use my code MDMZ to get a 20% discount. Once you reach the GUI cell, you will notice that the set things you've selected have been loaded into an easy to use interface. From there, you can adjust your target prompts and other settings. And I'll walk you through the steps to ensure that your changes are applied correctly. Right below that, we have the do the run cell. Here, you can preview your frames and decide whether you wanna continue or change some settings. For example, if you don't like how it looks so far, you can click here to stop the run. To make some changes, simply head back to the settings UI. From there, you can add some keywords to your prompt or even add some negative prompts. It's all up to you and how creative you wanna get. The other main settings that will greatly impact the output, style strength controls how much change the AI will make compared to the original video while CFG scale essentially tells the model how closely to follow the text prompt. I recommend experimenting with these settings until you find a happy medium. Once you've finished with that, it's important to remember that you need to rerun the in-painting model cell before restarting the run. And after that, just wait for the preview to see if you like the style. And if you do, simply let it run. Once the run has finished, go to your Google Drive. You will find that an AI folder has been created Let's open it and then open the stable warp fusion folder. Inside, go to the images underscore out folder. You will find all of the batches you created here. I named mine tutorial and here it is. Open your batch folder and you will find all of the stylized video frames inside. We still need to convert the image sequence into a video. And to do that, simply select all the frames, right click, download, and Google Drive will take care of archiving all of the images into a single zip file. Also notice that right next to the processed images, there is a settings folder inside which you will find a different file for each run. This is very useful in case you wanna reuse certain settings. Now let's go ahead and extract the image sequence into a new folder. To convert this into a video, you can use any editing software. I prefer to use After Effects and I'll show you how to use it to create a transition and enhance the animation. Right click inside the project tab, choose import, file. First, let's bring in the original video drag it and drop it here to create a new composition which by the way you can press enter to rename it i will call mine ai animation now that we have the original video let's import the ai sequence to do so select the very first frame enable png sequence and click import then right click on the imported sequence and go to interpret footage main since the frame rate of the original clip was 25, 
we should match it here as well. I've noticed that Warp Fusion sometimes messes up the width of the frames, so just make sure you match it back to the original dimension. We also need to adjust the length of the animation. Simply hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and drag the end of the layer to stretch it out. Let's take a look. The animation plays out nicely and you can toggle the animation layer to see if it matches your clip properly. You can see that it does here which is great, however I want the video to start with the original clip and transition to the animation when the finger snaps. One way to achieve this is by using an After Effects plugin called Gradient Wipe. Let's add it to the animation sequence. First change the transition softness to 50%. Let's move on to the snapping moment. To create the transition, enable the stopwatch on transition completion and set it to 100. Next, move a few frames forward on the timeline. Press U to pull up the keyframes in your timeline. This time, bring the completion down all the way to zero. And to create a smoother transition, select both keyframes and right click. Go to Keyframe Assistant and then click on Easy Ease. If you want to get more creative, you can use other plugins such as the one I used in my Disco Diffusion video to create an electric transition. Although it looks pretty good here, we still have some inconsistency between the frames. To reduce this, I use a plugin called Deflicker. It works on both Windows and Mac and is compatible with several editing programs. You can find the link in the description. There are a few options to choose from, but we're going with Deflicker High Speed. You may notice some issues with the transition once you add this. To fix it, simply enable Maintain Source Alpha. And by the way, if you use DaVinci Resolve, you can take advantage of its built-in deflicker effect for the same purpose. You can see how much the reduction of flicker has improved the overall look of our sequence. And I encourage you to experiment with different settings as the result will depend a lot on your video. Another great way to improve the overall look and feel of this video is through color grading. Playing around with contrast, shadows and hues can further polish the animation. However, as with the other steps, the result will depend on the input. If you're interested in replicating this look for your own sequence, you can find the project files on my Patreon page. To export the video, go to Composition, select Add to Adobe Media Encoder, choose an output folder and start rendering. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the animation was set to 720p only, so the quality is not great. Fortunately, there's another amazing AI tool that can help us enhance and upscale our video to a higher resolution. It's called Topaz Video AI and I've been using it a lot lately to restore video details. To get started, let's open Topaz Video AI and import the video. I recommend upscaling it twice the original size. If needed, you can change the video format. Once you're happy with the settings, hit export as and choose where you want to save the upscaled video. And looking at the preview, you can see that the upscaled version looks much sharper and more detailed, which is really impressive. I would love to see what you guys create with Warp Fusion, so feel free to share your animations with me on Instagram or Discord. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads. Be sure to check out the other creative AI videos on my channel. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I will read all of them. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.